And welcome to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, today we have a, a question from uh, one of my YouTube subscribers, and um, Richard has a question about uh, something that comes up in fabrication a fair amount uh, when dealing with large uh, structural shapes like this, in particular tubing. Um, the larger the tubing and the thicker the wall thickness of the tubing, the, the larger the, the corner radius is. So many times when doing a layout uh, on these kinds of shapes, um, we have to work on one side and then we have to work on the other. So a lot of times we need to transfer uh, lines around the, uh, uh, around the shape or from one face to another face, 90 degrees from one another. So um, to do this accurately, um, you know, while you're uh, up on a welding table and uh, there's all kinds of stuff in the way, it can be a challenge sometimes. Um, or just doing your layout to maybe take it over to the drill press or the milling machine to, uh, to punch holes in it or slots or something like that. Um, can be difficult. So your standard, uh, you know, standard combination square here, this is a Starrett with a 24 inch blade. Um, the, uh, the width the width of the, uh, the square head is kind of small in comparison to the uh, in comparison to this radius here. And what happens is, is it, it tends to ride up and, and not sit against that well. So what a lot of guys do is they'll actually kind of tip this down a little bit but that's got its problems too. It's got a little bit of wiggle there and uh, um, you know the farther you go the more out of square you can be pretty easily. So you know, ideally the blade is flat on the uh, on the surface that you want to uh, make a mark on, and uh, this is nice and hard up against the uh, uh, the side that you're squaring against. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's a little bit of a problem. It's not it's not wide enough. Um, so we got two problems: we got the radius and we got the width of this. Um, and um, so what I've done over the years um, is um, I made a uh, uh, a face extender uh, for starters. There's, there's two tricks I'm going to show you uh, and both of these are in my book uh, Sink or Swim Metalworking. Uh, Industrial Press sells it so uh, it's, it's the same thing I'm going to tell you now so you don't need to buy the book just to figure this out. Um, so uh, it's a face extender and then a way to transfer uh, lines around the corner uh, accurately. So what I have here, this is the face extender and I'll zoom in on this later and show you how it goes on the square head. Uh, but it's got a, it's accurately milled and lapped uh, by hand um, to fit the square head here, nice and tight. And, um, and basically it widens this, uh, this surface here. And it's retained, it's retained to the square head. It's got some, some small cone point set screws going in from the sides that actually just come in and they they ride slightly slightly above this little lip here on the side and actually push the the square or the, the square head down into the groove and they push it down nice and tight so it's got a good fit um, as opposed to just coming in directly into the sides. They come over the top and that little cone point hits that edge and then actually forces it down. Anyway that's the general idea. Uh, so let me go ahead and put this on, and uh, and then all right. The old guys need glasses, so I'm gonna put the the old guy glasses on here. I'm just kind of holding it in place, and I'm only gonna. It's got a bunch of screws, probably more than it needs, but I'm only gonna put put four down for now. Um, if I was going to be using this all day long or whatever, I'd put them all down, um, you know, to get a good, uh, good, good fit there. Okay. So there it is. It's on, and it's 90 degrees to that. And you can see now that we've got an excellent registration against the side of that. Um, this particular one, um, I made this out of. Uh, yeah, it's stainless steel, uh, but it's 17.4 pH stainless steel, which is a really 
uh, wonderful material. Uh, it's weldable, it's corrosion resistant, and it's heat treatable. Um, and it doesn't move around a lot when you heat treat it. So uh, I've been, I like it a lot. It's a nice material um, for these kinds of things. Um, so anyway, you can see here, this register is real nice. And then pull out my Sharpie here. We can get a good line. Well, let me use the fat end there. So that, that works great for this, for the flat here, but what's going on here, and this is one of Richard's uh, questions was, he says, geez, you know, I gotta get it around the corner, I gotta go all the way around this thing, and I'd really like a nice, a nice line all the way around, right? Well, hey, good point, Richard. Uh, I like a nice line all the way around too. So what I do, um, and it's just a simple little trick, is I use this guy here. This is part of the, uh, part of the combination square set and it's used for for finding the centers of, uh, of uh, round disks and uh, round objects but it has another use and uh, if you see an extra one of these at the flea market even if it doesn't have the screw go ahead and pick it up because what I like it for is this so now what I'm doing here is I'm just putting this up against my line here and it's it's sucked up against this nice square corner here real well so now I can just go around that corner and continue my line here quite nicely and I've transferred that around accurately so then now I'm not going to do it now because this tube weighs a ton um, this is 10 inch by 10 inch here and uh, I used my little crane to put it up here but anyway uh, we transferred that around and if you wanted to soldier on and uh, and continue here we just go like this And you can just go all the way around the tube. And you can see here, in this area here, that we uh, we got around the corner real nicely there. So, and you can use a scriber, you don't have to use a sharpie, so you can do real accurate lines. A real common, uh, um, a real common thing is that you might have a, uh, uh, a hole on this side, um, and then you'd have a hole 180 degrees opposite from the other side, and you really want those holes to, to be in line. So, you know, 10 inches is a long way to reach all the way through this thing if you're not doing it on a boring mill or something like that. So, um, the way I would handle that is I would lay it out um, and I would pick one of the sides as my datum, say this side here, and then I'd come in and I'd lay this out and, uh, you know, accurately with scribe lines. And then I'd go, I'd flip this over and using that same datum surface, because, you know, the tube varies a little bit in width, so if I accidentally swap my datum surface, um, I may have a, a mismatch when I get to the other side of the tube. Excuse me. Um, so, if you use that same datum surface and then do your layout accurately, uh, um, uh, you'll get a good lineup. You know, this is fabrication type tolerances. If we were doing this in the machine shop and we wanted it accurate, you know, we try to reach all the way through. Um, and... Um, or you would, uh, you know, you'd still retain that same datum surface and you'd swap the piece around and reacquire your zero. Um, so anyway, that's, a, that's just a quick, easy way to do that um, with, the, uh, um, with the face extender here uh, for the square. And you know, you could make this out of, cast iron would actually probably be pretty good too because uh, one of the things you end up doing is uh, um, a lot of times is you want to, you want to slide this along and mark a line parallel to an edge. So cast iron's a nice uh, slippery material on steel. Uh, it's real friendly that way. Um, in general, I don't leave this on all the time. Um, but, you know, once again, if you're at the flea market and you pick up another square head uh, for cheap, you could just leave this on there and just leave it on there forever and just when you need it, you just pop your blade in there and off you go, right? And then you don't have to take it on and off and do that stuff. So that might be another way to do that. So anyway, uh, it's a little shop trick there. So I'm gonna, I'll zoom in on this so you guys get a better look at it uh, up close. And uh, um, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this thing off so you can kind of see. And uh, you can see the, uh, 
the row of uh, these cone point set screws that are in here. They're on both sides. And um, I'll just go ahead and take this off so you can see what the, uh, what the groove looks like. And uh, these are pretty small screws. I think they're 256s. Um, and why I use that size, I don't remember. <laughs> So uh, maybe it's what I had in a, in a cone point screw. So here you can see, you can see the groove and it's relieved in the corners here a little bit. Um, the groove is, uh, let's get a scale here. Uh, the groove's about 3 16 deep, something like that. And um, you know it's the width of the uh, uh, of the combination square head. Then it has a uh, um, a slot for the blade to go through. Now, what's important if you're machining one of these yourself is that this surface here, this is a reference surface, and this is a reference surface here. Um, that those two are real parallel. That's what you're uh, that's what you're looking for. All this stuff. This is this is just along for the ride. It doesn't care. Um, and um, but this the bottom of this groove and this face here they really need to be uh, uh, oh yeah it looks like I surface ground that yeah I don't even remember now so I probably put this on a block in there something like that and clamped it to the block and then uh, surface ground that uh, something along those lines I frankly uh, it's been so long I can't quite remember how I did that so um, so anyway that's how that is and then uh, um, it just slides in there like so and then we'll put the screws down again and one more pink okay and that's it it's in there okay so that's the face extender and then uh, the um, the centering head used to uh, to transfer a line around the corner, okay? Um, okay, so uh, that's about it for today. Uh, just a short little video uh, for Bill, or excuse me, Richard. Um, his handle is Big Chappy on YouTube, and then his name is Richard, so uh, I'm not sure how those two mix together, but uh, thanks, Richard, for a, uh, a real simple to shoot uh, little video thing. I hope you guys like it. Um, and I said it before, I'll say it again. Um, I'm open to suggestions for, uh, for quick little video shoots like this for things that you guys want to see um, or um, problems that you're facing in, the, uh, in metalworking. So um, no subjects are uh, off limits in my mind. Um, it's all just part of the trade. So anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, get out in the shop and get cracking, okay? Talk to you later.